Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm actually not going to be teaching you guys anything new. So if you're more interested in just like speeding through and learning everything, I suggest you just move to the next video. But what I'm going to be doing is showing you some common problems that you're going to want to solve and how you can do that with the information I've showed you so far. So kind of bringing everything in now, um, mixing it all together and using all the things. And this is a really good way to kind of like apply all the knowledge that we've just learned into solving like a few common computer problems because a lot of the time you guys learn how to do all this stuff, but you don't know how to kind of mix it all together. And that's what I'm trying to do in this video. So I'm also gonna be showing you some like useful methods and some things that I may have forgotten to talk about in, in uh, previous videos. So yeah, that's what this video is gonna be about. So in the last video, I mentioned that a good exercise to do would be if you have like, uh, I don't know, a word, and you want to count or like a sentence or a string you want to count all of the letters and store them in like a hash map and have the letter as the key and the value being how many times they appear so i figured for any of you guys that were uh brave enough to attempt that on yourself i would show you a solution here quickly to doing that and for any of you guys who didn't see that make sure you pay attention because this is really useful it's going to help you also to understand kind of how maps work and how you can use them so what i'm going to do first of all is i'm just going to create a string let's call str is equal to and I'll say uh, hello my name is Tim and I am cool all right very creative string name anyways um, so we're gonna do that just because we're gonna count all of the letters in this string now the human way to count this would be to go through and literally read like each letter and be like okay so I have an L how many times does L appear but I'm gonna show you how we do this with maps and for loops like very efficiently um, in computing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a for loop what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the string and the way that we can do this is because if i try to do like for char or uh like x because it's going to be a character right and in str you see we get this red line and it says we can't iterate over um, a string so the way that we can do this is actually a cool method and a useful method and it is going to convert this string into a character array for us and the way that we can do that is by doing uh i guess a dot dot two char array and this is uh, if I literally just print this out for you if you want to see what it looks like system dot out dot print ln is simply just going to put every character so including the spaces into a character array for us so let's just run this uh, and you can see it just is literally just printing this entire thing but it's actually in an array and it, this is going to allow us to loop through it so you'll see in a second okay so what I'm going to do now is every character, I'm going to see if that key already exists in the map. If it does, I'm going to get the value because that value is going to be how many times it exists. So in this case, say I'm looking for like M, it already exists in the map. I'm just going to add one to it and then overwrite that key with a new value. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm going to say if M dot contains key of X, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, old uh we'll say int old equals m dot get and then the key is going to be x and then what we're going to do is what's the issue here m add cast int if m i need this forgetting all my brackets int old equals m dot get x and x should be hmm, interesting one second saying i have to cast this to an integer Okay, let's just do this. I don't think we actually need to do this, but let's just cast it to an int. Uh, all right, anyways. And then we'll say m dot put. And for the key, it's going to be x, because that's going to be the character. And we're going to say old plus one. Now, what this should do for us is just increment the, uh, the amount. So that's going to go up by one. Now, otherwise, so if that key does not exist, what we're going to do is we're going to put into our map a new key. And the key's value is going to be 1 because we just found the first occurrence of that letter. And the key is going to be X, standing for the letter. And that should work. Now, after we do that, I want to see the counts of all these letters. So to do that, uh, it's probably help if I spell it system correctly. We're going to print the line and we're just going to print M. Okay, so quickly, I know I did this fast and you might not really understand exactly what's going on. But we're just looping through every letter in this string. We're going to check. The first check is going to see if uh, the map contains that letter already, so as a key. Um, if it does not, what we're going to do is we're simply going to add in a key, and it's going to be equal to that letter, and it's going to have a value of 1. Because we just found it, it occurs one time, we already know that. 
Now, if for some reason, or if that key does exist, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that previous count, and then we're gonna add one to that previous count and override the key. So like if the count is four, it goes up to five. Pretty straightforward. So if I run this, you can see we get space. Well, there's eight spaces. We get A, there's three A's, C, there's one, D, there's one. And it goes through and it counts all of the different letters for us. And if we wanted to confirm if that was correct, we could go through and count them like that. And just by looking at it here, it does look as though that is correct. So yeah, that's a really common way to use a map. Um, yeah, it's really useful. And there's a lot of cases in which you want to do something like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is something I forgot to do in the last video. And this is literally just going to take like 10 seconds, but pretty much to remove an element from a map, you probably already guessed, but it's literally just m dot remove, and then you just type the key. So I just felt like I had to say this because I watched back my other video and I realized I forgot to say it. <laughs> so to remove an element, you do m dot remove and just put the key. So if I wanted to remove like all the spaces, which actually wouldn't be a bad idea to remove from our counts, then if I do that, uh, hmm, interesting why it's not letting me remove that. Uh, let's try that maybe. Oh, it's because it's not, it's because it's a character. My bad, sorry guys. I've been doing string, a character of a space is different. Uh, yeah, so then it actually removes the uh, that character, the space from our program or from our map, whatever. Okay. Now, the next thing I wanted to show actually is sorting. So sorting is something you typically want to do on arrays. So I'm actually going to remove all this and I'm going to create a new array, uh, an integer array. I'm going to say int x equals, in this case, let's do like three and let's do a bunch of different values and see if we can get this to sort for us. Uh, let's do negative 99 semicolon there for us and to sort this is actually really easy all we have to do is just type arrays dot sort and then what it takes is it takes two arguments now the first argument is obviously going to be our array so in this case x and then the other two arguments are actually optional and what these do sorry so there's three arguments not two what these arguments do is from a certain index. So if we wanted to sort just, let's say like this part of the list that's highlighted, we can actually do that. And the way that we would do that is we would type one because we're gonna start at one. And then if we were going to seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, funny enough, we would actually type seven. Now I know this is index six, but the thing is it's gonna sort up, but not including to that index. So if we type seven, it's gonna, uh, that's seven, but it's only going to sort up to like the actual number seven. Okay. And what this does, and I believe is actually just changes the list. We don't need to say like X equals arrays.sort. We just say arrays.sort. And then what we can do is we can do system dot out dot print LN and we can print X and let's see if it did end up sorting that section of the list for us. Okay, so we actually, uh, man, of course we can't do that. We're gonna have to set up a basic for loop to print these out just because when we try to print arrays, I forgot we get that little loop or we get that message because that's the memory address. But anyways, let's say for uh, int i in x and then we'll simply just print out i. It's gotta make it complicated for us, doesn't it? Uh, and instead of printing ln we're just going to print and we'll just add a comma here just to make it separated okay so let's run that so there we go so it actually did uh sort this middle section of the list for us right so we got one two three four five six seven and you see eight and zero were not touched and negative 99 was not touched now if you want to sort the entire thing and you don't want to worry about these indexes you can just put x in this case if we do this we're going to get negative 99 zero all the way up to eight um, and yeah, so you could sort like from three to five or three to six or whatever. Okay. And you can see it's only going to sort like a few of the elements in the list for us or in the array for us. So that's a really useful way to sort things at quite quickly actually, and quite easily using, uh, just arrays.sort. And remember, you don't have to do like X equals arrays.sort because what it's actually going to do is just sort in place all the elements of X and swap them around. Uh, rather than creating like a new version of X that is sorted. So anyways, I know this has been like a quick video, but I just wanted to show you and for some of the guys that might have been struggling um, 
how we can kind of incorporate some of these things together and how to create like a basic problem solving program, maybe a way you go about doing that. Hopefully this was useful to you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. And in the next video, we're going to be getting into object oriented programming and that's going to be the rest of the tutorial series. Uh, it's a bit more complex, but it's definitely like the heart of Java and it's something that we have to understand. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and I will see you in the next one.